Hello and welcome to Tech Me Out. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the top 10 Android apps that I have for you all today. This is a video that has been highly anticipated and you have all been so patient and waiting for it. Now this particular video is long overdue so I am very happy to tell you all today that I have it for you. So without any further ado, we can go ahead and get started. I know I'll have some questions about this particular layout that I have here. The information regarding it will be down below in the description box. So definitely check that out. But moving on to the top 10 apps for my HTC One that I'm currently using. So some of these, some of you may already be familiar with, but these are top applications in my book and hopefully they will be for you as well. So first up, in terms of if you have questions about that wallpaper there, I got that one with this application known as Edge. So starting up here at the top, we have regular wallpapers that you can search for, or you can search for live wallpapers in addition to ringtones, notifications, and games. So I'm gonna jump back to wallpapers because you'll notice here they have beautiful, gorgeous wallpapers, and they are definitely high quality as well. So when you find a wallpaper you like, you have the option to download it here in the bottom left-hand corner, but because I have already downloaded the wallpaper, I'm only given the option to set this as my wallpaper from within the application. If I jump back here, you'll notice that you have some subcategories, such as looking at the most recent wallpapers or looking at the popular wallpapers. You also have the option to search for wallpapers. So these are some recent searches that I have done. So say for instance, I were to select city, it's then gonna pull me up different categories that it found city type things in, such as city type wallpapers, city type live wallpapers, ringtones, notifications, and games. Coming in next, we have Blur One. Now Blur One will take your wallpapers to that next level so you can create a wallpaper or create a custom image. And what it does is pretty much what you see this wallpaper behind the title of the application. It blurs it. So for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and select create a wallpaper. You have two options from within here where you can use your current wallpaper to blur or you can choose one from your gallery. So I'm gonna do my current wallpaper. And you'll see you have this circle here and you can adjust the intensity of the blur effect by simply sliding your finger on the circle here. So I'm gonna slide it a little bit more. And here we are like that. And now you see it is very, very blurred. And if I slide it back, it decreases the intensity. So I think I'm gonna go for a semi-blurred effect or a little over semi. Now, once you have gotten the effect to the point that you like it, you can then choose the option to save the wallpaper or you can set the wallpaper. So to save it, you're gonna choose that disc there and to set it, you're gonna choose the arrow here. So I'm gonna select the arrow. It's gonna let me know it's setting the wallpaper. Now we have success. So once I go back to my home screen, you'll see the wallpaper is currently there and it looks good. Coming in at number three, we have Clean Master. Clean Master pretty much scans your entire device to help you clean up space and clean up RAM so it moves faster. So you'll see currently I'm only using 11% of my uh, storage space on my device and 80% of my RAM. So if I were to tap on junk files here, it will then scan my phone and find some junk files and then tell me how much space I can get back. And if I wanna get it back, I can select Clean Junk it will then start to delete those things that it considers junk and it gives me 31.1 megabytes back. So I'm gonna select done here. Then if I were to, for instance, select memory boost, it then scans my device for things that are running in the background, slowing down my memory. So I can get that back um, down here if I were to select boost. It would then give me 378.6 megabytes back so that my device will run faster. You also have the option for Clean Master to scan files that you currently have on your device to see if it determines it as a security risk or anything like that. And it will also scan things as you download them. So I'm gonna come back later to that. And then you have the App Manager here, which lets you uninstall applications all at once so you can pretty much do a bulk uninstallation or you can back up different applications to your SD card. So I'm gonna hop back out here. Coming in next we have Cal. Now Cal is a very beautiful application where you pretty much can see what you have to do for the week ahead or you can take a month view here by sliding down. However, if I wanna see what I have to do for the rest of the week, I can kind of slide my finger up here like so or I can slide it down here like so to skip throughout the week. If I were to hit the back button here, it jumps me back to today. 
And then if I hit the plus button here, it lets me add an event very quickly. You also have a couple of settings that you can configure from down within here. So if I were to select settings, it lets me sync over my birthdays that I have in Facebook and such, or it lets me choose which calendars are visible as well as which calendar is my default calendar. And it will also connect with any do. So if you have, or if you use the any do uh, to do list manager, then you can sync over uh, things that you have to do within here. You also have the option to change the photo theme. So say for instance, you don't like getting pictures of fashion or food or whatever. You can uncheck it so that you don't get those pictures because it does choose random pictures that will be displayed down here. In addition to having a beautiful calendar, you also have a beautiful widget that you can add to your home screen. So you'll see here, I have the how widget. So I can have everything that I have to do for that week at a glance and I can quickly add an event by hitting the plus symbol from within this widget as well. Coming in at number five, we have open mic. Now this allows you to use Google search through voice activation, much like it is on the Moto X. So you don't even have to touch your device for it to respond. So in order to activate this option, you first need to press the play button and it then begins to run in the background. And if you say the key phrase that you set, it will then activate the option for Google to begin searching. So I'm going to go back to my home screen and I'm going to demo this. Okay, Google. What time is it in Japan? The time in Japan is 6.48 a.m. Okay, Google. Open up my calendar. Opening up. Okay, Google. What's the weather in Jamaica? Okay, Google. Find me a picture of Jay. Find me a picture of Jay Z. So hopefully that's enough to kind of demo Google now. I really don't know what to ask it. <laughs> I guess I should have thought about that first. But nonetheless, that is what it can do. So it can search your phone and also open particular applications. Now for my iOS users who have converted to Android, I have some applications for you all. Because if you're like me, there's certain things on the iPhone that just didn't simply come over to Android that I did not know would not be there. So there's an app called My Mail, which all of you can download, which are basically basically integrate all of your email inboxes into one. That's something I loved about my iPhone where I had one app that had all of my email accounts in there. Whereas when I hopped on my HTC one, I'm noticing I got to sign into Gmail and Yahoo and all these different applications. And it was just aggravating, especially coming from a iPhone where everything was integrated. So I found this particular application that lets you put all of your email accounts into one and it has this beautiful interface, which puts me in the mindset of my iPhone. So it's the best of both worlds as much as possible. Now you can click on inbox here and see all of your folders that you normally have in your email account if you have specific folders set up and such. But overall, the interface is beautiful and I'm enjoying it. I'm not going to dive too much into it because I do have some personal information in here that I do not want on my video. So hopefully you just check it out. It's free. There's no reason why you shouldn't. Now, another particular application for my iPhone users coming over to Android that I feel you must all have is Smooth Sync Calendar. No! Okay, if you could not tell, my battery died on my camera. So yeah, I'm picking up now from where I left off before my camera died. I had to charge it. So here we go. As I was saying, another application that an iOS user may benefit from is called Smooth Sync Cal. Now it is, I think about maybe $2 or so, but it is definitely a must have, especially if you use the calendar app on your iOS device. So I was a heavy user of the calendar app and I used iCloud for my syncing services. I know you do have the option to use Google, which would allow you to use uh, the calendar service on your Android and your iOS device. 
but I didn't want to use it. I wanted to use iCloud because I share my calendars, regardless, whatever. So that's just the back history on it. But basically what this application does is allows you to sync your iCloud calendar. The cool thing about it is I can add an event on my iPhone and it will sync through iCloud to my Android device as well. So what you will need in order to do this is your um, iCloud account. So if you don't know what your account is on your iDevice, simply go to your settings, go to iCloud, and then from within iCloud, click on your account at the top. And if you scroll down, it will tell you your email account that you're using for your iCloud calendar. But once you do that, then whenever you add an event on your iPhone, it will also add onto your Android device. It's very beautiful, very seamless, definitely must have. Coming in next, we have swipe in. So swipe in will allow you to activate pretty much a built-in gesture that performs a function such as adjusting your brightness or turning up your volume. So for instance, if I were to take my finger over here and slide up, you'll notice that my brightness is being adjusted by me simply gliding my finger up and down on this side of my screen. I also have a built-in gesture activated over here so it will adjust my volume. So if I slide up and then into the middle, and go left or right, it will turn my volume of my device up or down. So those are just two gestures that you can put in here. But let's go ahead and jump into the application itself and take a better look at it. So you'll notice within here with swipe in, you can turn it off or on. You can also turn invisible mode off or on, meaning if this is off, then you'll always see this regardless of where you're at on the screen. And if you don't want that and just kind of want a clean look, you can turn it off. You also have the option to add spot, um, hot spots. So if I were to hit this plus symbol here, it'll let you choose the type of hot spot up here. And then it will let you choose perpen if you want the swipe mode to be perpendicular or parallel. To break it down a little bit in terms of it being parallel, that was what I was doing over here for my brightness, which is sliding up or down. And then if you want the perpendicular action, that was what I was doing over here for my ringer, where I slide up and then into the middle and go left to right. So you can basically choose whichever one works best for you. Then you also have the option to reposition where the particular hotspot is in addition to changing the width here as well as the height and the color of that hotspot. So currently this one for the ringer volume is a little hard to notice but it's down here in the bottom and that's one of the things I noticed about this particular application is that sometimes if the width is not wide or the height is not wide enough it is a little hard to activate. So just keep that in mind in terms of when you set it up. Coming in at number nine we have swipe pad. Now this one is one that I definitely suggest everybody download if you haven't already downloaded on your device. What it does is it gives you a hotspot to touch on your device so that you can pull up a quick launcher for your favorite applications or whatever applications you so choose to put in there. So currently mine's is set in this top corner, it vibrates and then I slide to the middle and now I can quickly jump into any of these applications. So if I slide over this, it will take me to my calendar. I can activate that from within here as well, just holding in that same area, sliding down to the middle. Say for instance, I wanna go into Instagram, I'm there. And shout out to whoever this person is. I don't know if you follow me, probably do. And that's probably why I'm following you. So am I a psycho? Shout out to you for being the first post up here. <laughs> so I'm gonna slide here again and now I can quickly jump into, let's say I wanted to go into my Play Store and I'm there. So I think you get the gist. Um, it's definitely a very nice application. You have some settings to configure such as setting up different pads. So say for instance, you want a pad known as your default pad or maybe a media pad because you can set up more than one hotspot. So I can have it set so that if I slide from the top right, it pulls up media um, applications. And then if I slide from the top left, it pulls up uh, my social sites or whatever like that. So you do have a couple of options from within here. I'll let you explore it to discover more. So next we have combat zombies. And what this does is it gives you this little block shaped character and you can kind of walk in and around this place. You're going to use your joystick to shoot as well as look around and try to kill off these zombies. I'm not the best at it right now. Plus it's a little bit harder to play at this angle, but Hopefully you can get the gist of it. It is definitely engaging, a little bit challenging because you see you get kind of bomb rushed by the zombies here. So you want to go ahead and kill them before they kill you. So let me see. So we have the joystick on the left and then we have the shoot trigger on the right. If you just hold down your finger over this little icon down there in the bottom right hand corner. Oh. 
right? My aim is like completely off. But I think that's enough of demo in that particular one. But that does sum everything up for this particular video. I hope all of you enjoyed it. And if you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as drop any comments and questions you have for me down below. Which brings me to my next thing, the question of the day. So I asked you before, what were your favorite applications on your iOS device? So now I would like to pose the same question to my Android users. What are your top five favorite applications for your Android device? Drop them down below and I will be selecting some people to feature in one of my next videos in terms of the comments that you left. In the meantime, these are the comments that I have selected from the last video. So thank you all for showing your support in that one, commenting on it, liking it and subscribing as well. But that's all everyone. And as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.